So what are you doing, Stu? I'm bringing all the outside stuff which has been culled overnight to the inside of the heap, which will heat up. And the oxygen is all through it as I'm doing it. Can we see any steam coming off? I can. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Look at the steam. It's a warm day too, so... I wouldn't have thought warm. It's only... Over 15 degrees. This... Oh, I'm saying 18. I would not think this was... Cooler than the 17, 18. 21, I got back into Perth last night. Well, anyway, if it was a cold morning, like 10, we would see an enormous amount of steam billowing off here. <coughs> because I'm seeing it in this 18 degree weather. So, this compost heap is only a week old. It's looking pretty good, eh, for the... Well, it's the sheep guts, dead chook, um, pig, pig guts, two pigs perhaps, a lot of wood chips, a lot of leaves, a lot of hay. The leaves and nutshells are what makes good fungus, fungal growth. What's a good like fungi? Because of the sugar in the nuts. Yeah? Well, who says there's sugar in nutshells? Is there? Yeah. Complex. Also, things like grains. Grains make grow yeast. fungus good. Yeast in the sugar. Hmm. But actually, Dr. Elaine Ingham says that. It's molasses and simple sugars that grow bacteria and complex nutshells, leaves from autumn trees. Please don't get too close to that no, green to. copper. Now it might be much easier to get the garden fork to turn the rest of it, to plonk the rest on top now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, folks, I can give instructions and just hold the camera in a lazy kind of fashion because I've done it for nine days. This is Stuart's first turning of the compost heap. The totally, hopefully, totally aerobic compost heap. If the temperature goes over 70, we know that indicates that there's a lot of good food in there. And the microbes are breeding furiously. And when they engage in acts of procreation, they give off lots of heat. Well, think of yourself. What happened last time you were... No, I'm not going to quote Dr. E. Laningham. Uh, I just highly recommend her courses. So... It's not actually that the, the high temperature is bad. It, it just means that when microbes are very, very busily breeding, eating and, and multiplying, they're using up the oxygen. And the danger is that the heap will become anaerobic. And an anaerobic heat creates ammonia gas, for one. It gives off your nutrients, which should stay in the compost heap, as as um, instead of going into nitrates, nitrogen goes into ammonium, ammonia, ammonia, sorry. Ammonium is a good thing. Nitrates are a good plant available uh, food. But if you can smell gas, and I, uh, yeah, I don't see, I don't smell too much here. If you can smell ammonia, it means that you're losing your nitrogen. And if you can smell rotten eggs, it's hydrogen sulfate, uh, fired. HS2 and if yeah the, the hydrogen sulfide is losing your sulfur uh, best form of plant available sulfur is sulfates and instead of an aerobic he, um, compost heap having lots of sulfate in, in the end it's 
you can lose your sulfur in the form of hydrogen sulfide gas. That's only when it goes anaerobic. So I don't think that it's a matter of the heap that getting too hot. That's not in itself a bad thing. It's just an indicator that an anaerobic condition is, is brewing up. And you're going to lose your nutrients. So we've turned this heap every day. Now I know, I know some people who've gone to the extent of getting up three times a night to turn their heap because it was getting too hot. Oh, I take my hat off to them. I wonder if they got the results that they were uh, looking for. Hmm. Well, you've done a splendid job there, Stu. Awesome. I think you just, uh, you've done it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, if anyone comes and jumps on my compost heap, I'll strangle them. If a big deluge of rain comes, I'm not that worried because I've put lots of chunky materials in there. If I put a lot of fine materials, the mm, it could get saturated and uh, soak up the water to such an extent there was no air gaps. But we've gone to a lot of bother. I've gone and got wheelbarrow full of chunky wood chips at least two yeah the the sheep guts up there i got and the the um the homemade chippings from the garden i've put in seaweed i've put in uh tagasasti leaves as much variety as possible because the microbes enter the heat do you want to just pull this back There's more varieties more hold that and pull nutrients. back that way Awesome. Uh, this will be interesting. It's a beautiful worm farm, this. But yes, the more materials the better because the bacteria and fungi that you introduce to the heap come arrive on the materials that you bring to the heap. So the more variety the better. And amazingly, I read that one third of species on earth is in in the soil one third more than a third they think but they really don't know a lot about soil they do know that we're uh, in we're losing species of um, soil life rapidly and we're losing them before we even discover them so how's that so this is not a thermo pile but it's a worm farm which is very aerated by the very action of the worms and yesterday I put some pig manure on here they seem to habitate around like it was fresh stinky wet pig poo and that's that's uh, a piece of uh, unmentionables oh, some pig guts there more pig guts I, I, yeah, more pig guts. But plenty of worms, isn't there? Isn't it lovely? Um, I'm not going to dive my hand into it because pig manure is something I do have some respect for it, until it's treated with worms. Passed through the body of an earthworm, it's um, likely to contain... Oh, my goodness, look at those! <gasps> wow, what did I put there that they liked so much? Woo! Hello, guys. What, what are you into there? Wow. Oh, you're like red spaghetti. Bless you. Okay, we must pause as the rain in Spain is falling on our plane yet again. How do we pause? Mm.